Hello students. This is the second lecture session on the subject Digital System Testing and Testable Design, Module 1, Part 2. I am Seema Safar, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. Today, we will be discussing on the second part of our Module 1. We will be discussing on modeling and functional modeling at logic level, functional modeling at register level, and structure models. We'll start with modeling. Now, let's discuss about the topic modeling in digital systems. Modeling plays a central role in the design, fabrication, and testing of a digital system. The way we represent a system has important consequences for the way we simulate it to verify its correctness, the way we model faults and simulate it in the presence of faults, and the way we generate tests for it. So in this session, we'll be discussing on the introduction on the basic concepts in modeling. And after that, we'll be discussing on different modeling techniques. Starting with the basic concepts, at any level of abstraction, a digital system or a circuit can be viewed as a black box, which processes the information carried by its inputs to produce its output. Now this figure depicts what I said, where I denotes inputs and O denotes the set of outputs. Now here you can see a black box, which defines the behavior of the system. Now this transformation occurs over time. Depending on the level of abstraction, the behavior can be specified as a mapping of logic values or of data words. Now let's discuss about some of the terminologies in basic concepts. First one is logic function. A logic function, you might have heard of it when you have studied your circuit. The logic function is actually an input-output mapping that deals only with the value transformation and it ignores the input-output timing relations. Representation of a logic function is by means of a model called as a functional model. Then we have a behavioral model, which is again a functional model which is coupled with a representation of the associated timing relation. The distinction between function and behavior is not always uh, known, but, that, but these terms are used often uh, interchangeably. A structural model describes a box as a collection of interconnected small boxes called as components or elements. A structural model is often hierarchical such that a component is in turn modeled as an interconnection of lower level components. The bottom level boxes are called as primitive elements and the functional uh, model is assumed to be non. The function of a component is shown by its type. Now suppose a block diagram of a computer system is a structural model in which the types of the components are CPU, RAM and input output device. Hope this is clear. Now let's discuss about external and internal models of a system. An external model of a system is the model which is viewed by the user, while an internal model consists of data structures and programs that represent the system inside a computer. So you might be knowing the example of an external model which, can, which is the graphical representation of a system or a diagrammatic representation of a system or it can be a text-based kind of thing. Now a text-based model is a description in a formal language which is referred to as hardware description language or HDL. Now HDL is used, to, used at the register and instruction set levels and they are generally called as register transfer languages. Now, like a conventional programming language, RTLs will be having declarations and statements. This we'll be seeing in the coming slides. 
Object oriented programming languages are increasingly used for modeling digital systems. Now let's discuss about the new technique, new modeling technique, which is functional modeling at logic level. The simplest way to represent a combination circuit is by its truth table. So a truth table representation or a primitive cube representation is considered as a functional modeling method. Now that is the simple way to represent a combination circuit. Assume that a binary input, you have a binary input value and a circuit realizing a function Z which has input values X1, X2, X drop to Xn which is having n variables. So it requires a table of two raised to n entries. Now the data structure representing a true table is usually represented as an array V and it will be having a dimension of Z. The procedure to determine the value of Z given a set of values for X1, X2, X up to Xn can be depicted with the help of a, an algorithm. First, you have to concatenate the input values x1 till xn in proper order to form one binary word. After that, you got a binary word, right? Determine the integer value of that word. After that, v of i will be giving you the value of z. Now let's see how you can compute a primitive cube. The cube associated with an ordered set of signals a1, a2, etc. up to an is a vector v1, v2, v3, etc. And they will be having corresponding signal values. Now a cube of a function z with inputs x1, x2, x3 has the form v1, v2, v3 such that vz where Vz is equal to Z of that is a function which is applied over V1, V2 and V3. Thus a cube of Z can represent an entry in its true table. So why we are studying this is a digital circuit can be represented either in the form of a true table or in the form of a primitive cube. Now primitive cube is actually going to a compressed version of a true table. Alright, so we have a set of steps to compute uh, the cube, to construct a cube. Now suppose an implicit G of Z is represented by a cube. Now it can be constructed as follows. First of all, we will be setting VI equal to 1 if XI of XI complement appears in G. After that, we will be setting VI equal to X if neither XI nor xi complement is appearing in g. Then set vz equal to 1. Now this shows an example of a true table where you can see on the left hand side the true table and its corresponding primitive cube on the right hand side. So in the left hand side you can see 0 0 0 and the uh, z logic function but on the right hand side, you can see the compressed version of this corresponding true table making use of the procedure that we have explained in the previous slide. Now let's discuss about functional modeling at logic level using state table and flow table. A finite state sequential machine function can be modeled as a sequential machine that receives inputs from a finite set of possible inputs and produces outputs from a finite set of possible outputs. So it will be having a finite number of input states or simply states. A finite state sequential machine can be represented using a state table. Now as we know a table can have a row and a column right. So a row in a state table will be corresponding to every internal state of a machine and a column will be corresponding to every possible inputs. Which means the entry in row QI and column IM, it represents the next state and the output produced. Now this is how you can denote it in a formal way. NZ, 
now n is going to show the each entry will be n comma z now n is going to the next state and z is going to be the output function of that machine i'll show you an example now this shows the example of a state table where you can see q will be denoting the states and x is the input okay now n each entry 1 0 will be having an entry 2 comma 1 which means 2 will be denoting the next state in which it will be moving and 1 will be denoting the output function of that machine now we need to recall what we have studied in a previous semester what do you mean by a synchronous sequential circuit now usually a synchronous circuit or a sequential synchronous sequential circuit is considered to have a canonical structure of this form now here you can see a combinational part which is fed by primary inputs x and by the state variables y every state in a state table corresponds to a different combination of values of these state variables now the concept of synchronization is explicitly implemented by using an additional input called a clock line events at time t1 t2 uh, etc are initiated by pulses on the clock line now the state of the circuit is stored in a flip-flop you'll be knowing all these things right usually a sequential circuit can also be designed without clocks such circuit are called asynchronous now the behavior of an asynchronous sequential circuit can be defined by a flow table now in a flow table a state transition involves a sequence of uh, state changes which is caused by a single input change until a stable configuration is reached now it can be denoted formally by using n of qi comma ij equal to qi what does qi denote qi denotes the state and ij denotes the input value now this is an example of a flow table now let's discuss about another method of functional modeling that is binary decision diagram a binary decision diagram is a graphical model of the function of a circuit now we make use of a simple graph traversal procedure to determine the value of the output by sequentially examining values of its input now this is the figure which gives a binary decision diagram of a function f which is equal to a bar b c bar plus a c now usually the traversal starts at the top and at every node we decide to follow the left or the right branch depending on the value of the corresponding input variable now supposing that we'll compute f for a b c equal to 0 0 1 at node a we take the left branch then at node b we also take the left branch and exit with value 0 if at an exit branch we encounter a variable rather than a value then the value of the function is the value of that variable now this occurs in our example for a equal to 1 here in this case f is equal to c now please note that when one dot is encountered on a branch during the traversal of a diagram then the final result is complemented binary decision diagrams are also applicable for modeling sequential functions next we move on to another method of functional modeling which means programs as functional models this is a code based modeling which is employed for primitive elements used in a structure model now consider this circuit shown in the figure now the code based modeling or the programs as functional model is depicted in the figure where you can see e is an output of a b c and e equal to a and b and c and f is an output from d right and d is inverted so f equal to inversion of d 
and z equal to e or f hope this is clear moving on to the second modeling technique which is functional modeling at register level starting with the first method which is basic rtl constructs now rtls provide models for systems at the register and the instruction set levels usually data words are stored in registers here and memories are organized as arrays of registers for example if you have a register ir from 0 to 7 which defines an 8 bit register and we have a memory abc which is denoted as 0 to 255 semicolon 0 to 15 and that denotes a 256 word memory with a 16 bit word now consider another example where we want to control we want to uh, we want the control of data transformations to be described now we make use of conditional operations in which the execution of operation is made dependent on the truth value of the condition control condition now consider this example if x then c equal to a plus b here plus and equals will be denoting the primitive operators now what does this mean this means that c equal to a plus b should occur when the control signal x is equal to 1 the second method in register level functional modeling includes timing modeling in rtls according to the treatment of the concept of time rtls can be divided into two categories one is procedural language and the second one is non-procedural language a procedural rtl is similar to that of a conventional programming language where the statements are sequentially executed so if you have an example a equal to b and c equal to a the value transferred into c is the new value of a okay so many procedural rtls directly use conventional programming languages like c or pascal now talking about a non procedural rtl they are usually executed in parallel so in the above example the old value of a is loaded into c so in a procedural in a non procedural rtl the statements a equal to b and b equal to a means it is literally an exchange between the contents of a and b now let's discuss about the third method of functional modeling at register level which is internal rtl models an rtl model can be represented internally either by data structures or by using a compiled code a model which is based on data structures can be interpreted for different applications by model independent programs now a code compiled code model is usually applicable only for simulations so a compiled code models are usually generated from what type of rtls procedural rtls now a code generation is a two step process first the rtl description is translated into a high level language like c or pascal after that the produced high level code is then compiled into an executable machine code hope this is clear now we'll discuss the third modeling technique which is structural modeling the last topic in module 1 external representation a typical structural model of a system in a connectivity languages it usually specifies the input output lines of the system its components and the input output signals of each component now consider a figure which is a circuit shown in this figure you can see two AND gates one OR gate and two NOT gates now when you are trying to represent it in an external representation method now this is the external representation of the circuit which is shown in the previous slide 
here you can see a circuit XR and the inputs are is equal to A comma B will be writing like this in a sequence of steps output is equal to Z now since we are noting A and the output of A is noted to get D we'll be writing it as not D comma e, A since we are noting B to get C then we'll be writing it as not C comma B and after that we'll be adding all these to E so A comma C is added with E and B comma D is added with F and the result we'll be getting at E and F is again odd to get Z. This is how external representation is done. So we shall conclude with the summary of today's session. First, we discussed about different basic concepts of modeling. After that, various modeling techniques. We discussed three modeling techniques. One is functional modeling at logic level and functional modeling at register level. And finally, we discussed on how structural modelings can be represented. The reference text for the session is listed here. Thank you.